<sighs> this China virus thing just will not go away. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbass to Talk in Politics. So let's not mess around. Hey, this is Gene. You're listening to Dumbass to Talk in Politics. Uh, and let's go into just the idiocy that is COVID-19 panic. Los Angeles, Los Angeles Mayor Gil Garcetti, Eric Garcetti, excuse me, issued an order for residents to stay at home, warning that the city is approaching, quote, devast- a devastating tipping point, end quote, in its fight against COVID-19 that would overwhelm the hospital system. Okay? This, he made it clear that if we do not cancel everything, we are all going to die. Let's listen to this. The public health of our city, the public health condition of our city, excuse me, is as dire as it was in March, in the earliest days of this pandemic. So tonight, I want to speak, as always, to you candidly, with the truths and the statistics that I get as soon as I get them, to share them with you and to know what we can do in the coming days. It's as much what you choose not to do as what you do do that will determine what happens here in our beloved hometown. The choices between us are stark, between health and sickness, between care and apathy, and yes, between life and death for too many of the people that we love. My message couldn't be simpler. It's time to hunker down. It's time to cancel everything. And if it isn't essential, don't do it. Don't meet up with others outside your household. Don't host a gathering. Don't attend a gathering. And following our targeted safer at home order, if you're able to stay home, stay home. So what does this mean? What does cancel everything mean? Well, it means literally cancel everything. What things does... Mayor Garcetti. Now, understand something. I'm from Los Angeles. I've got some deep loves with Los Angeles. But politically, Los Angeles is a train wreck. So this is what he wants to cancel. He wants to ban all dining, indoor and outdoor. He wants to ban walking. He wants to ban running and jogging. He wants to ban driving. He wants to ban riding a bike. He wants to ban all use of public transportation. He wants to ban riding motorcycles and scooters. <sighs> Sounds like he's got a lot of things that he actually wants to ban. I don't know. Uh, this this guy is a complete moron, and I don't know why he how he got elected. But here are some things he doesn't want to ban. Activities like golf and tennis. Gee, I wonder why. Could Mayor Garcetti actually like golf and tennis? I'd say probably. Eat grocery stores and markets. Makes sense. We still need to get food, toilet paper, and all sorts of fun crap. Healthcare facilities. Makes sense. Somebody has to go somewhere. Faith-based outside services. I'm sorry, what was not banned? I, I, so, faith-based outside services. Well, he can't ban those. The Supreme Court ruled two weeks ago that you can't ban religious services. And he won't ban liquor stores or pot dispensaries because these are considered essential services. Every, now, and we're going to go a step further. Everyone over the age of 16 traveling into L.A., which includes me because I was going to go visit my dad this weekend, must complete an online form upon arrival to acknowledge they've read and understood the California Travel Advisory. Failure to submit the form is punishable by a fine of up to $500. Well, I've only got two words to say to that crap. Fuck you. And I mean that. There will be a little bit of cussing because I am sick and tired of this crap. This is nothing but tyranny. This is coming from people who do what they want. They don't, but you better do what they say. You cannot go to a barber shop or salons 
But what if these politicians and these elites need a haircut? They go to a barber shop and a salon or a salon. One's day closed, by the way. They tell you not to eat out. But what if the elites want to go eat out, go have a dinner? They go to a restaurant, usually one that is about $400 a plate with no masks inside and usually with other politicians and lobbyists. That's that laundry restaurant in Napa Valley that now multiple politicians in California have visited. You want to drive your car at 10.05 p.m.? You can't without looking at a $500 fine. But a governor's husband can use his sway to get his boat put on a lake so that he can go take a fishing trip. Thank you, Gretchen Whitmer. They tell you not to travel, and they are going uh, not to travel, and they're going to be there are going to be restrictions if you do. But what if they want to travel? They do, and will lecture you via Zoom post while sitting in their hotel rooms in another country. The last one thing. Let's let's. There's Steve Alder. Adler, the Democratic mayor of Austin, Texas. He decided it was important to tell his subjects that they needed to stay inside and do no traveling. He even released a video with statistics and basically said, stay at home, skip the holidays, and don't travel. What a caring man. What a wise man. There's just a problem. When he released his video, he was in Cabo San Lucas attending a wedding with a couple of dozen people, probably not wearing a mask. The wedding would have been far less romantic that way. (coughs) He made the announcement (coughs) while in his hotel room in Cabo. Ugh. This is so frustrating. Here's the thing. People are beginning to see this for what it is. Control and power tyranny. They see this as a chance for the elites to take control of the population. And all the people in power and creating the shutdowns are Democrats. All those who are being hypocrites are Democrats. You don't see this from Republicans. Rick DeSantis, a Republican gover- the Republican governor from Florida, was caught having dinner at a restaurant. No controversy. Christy Nome. Republican governor of South Dakota was pictured with fans in front of Mount Rushmore. No one was wearing masks. No controversy. Greg Abbott, Republican governor from Texas, was running around in his wheelchair in public with no mask. No controversy. Why? Is it because the media loves Republicans? No. They never close their economies. Businesses are able to continue. People are able to work and spend their money. All we have to do is practice our individual rights and make the right choices to deal with the Wuhan flu in the way they we see fit. And Republican governors, they trust their people. And each of these states, by the way, have the lowest infection and death rates in the country, which again never gets talked about. Each of these states also has not suffered the economic collapse that other states have suffered through these extreme lockdowns like New York, New Jersey, Michigan, California, and Illinois. All of those states, Democratic-run states. Hell, they're not even Democratic at this point. They're all leftist. Here's the thing. Citizens are fed up and are being beginning to fight back. Newport Beach in California held a huge rally protesting the lockdowns. Also in California, the Ventura, Riverside, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Bernardino, and Orange County Sheriff's Departments have said they will not enforce lockdowns because they are unconstitutional. You know why? Because the sheriff is basically stuck on the Constitution. They're stuck on the rule of law. They don't listen to a tyrant. New York is having rallies involving hundreds of thousands of people supporting the continuing of businesses, of bars, 
restaurants, and gyms. The owners will keep their places open. Keep their places open in spite of facing arrest and extreme fines. Gyms in Michigan are refusing to close. Again, the owners face arrest and extreme fines. Churches have gone to the Supreme Court to allow themselves to stay open, and they've won. This is because of tyranny. Just to give you an example, listen to this guy. He owns a cafe in Michigan. His entire family works there. He has been shut down for six months, opened up, and is being shut down again in Michigan. He found a reporter talking about COVID-19, and this guy went absolutely ballistic bananas on him in a reasonable way. He wasn't crazy. Let's listen to this. By the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association. News Channel 3's Tavarius Haywood joins us live in Portage with the details on why the judge said no. Uh Tavarius, is everything okay? Okay. Our government leaders have abandoned me. Are you are you the owner? Four trillion dollars of stimulus money. They gave it to who? Special interest groups and campaign donors. I'm Dave Morris. I own the place. So what's going on? What's going on? You know what's going on. Tell me. You tell me. Hey, we got a government that has taken the stimulus money. They gave it to special campaign donors. They gave it to special interests. They abandoned me, and they have put me in a position where I have to fight back. Okay? So do you feel that this is the right thing to do? Absolutely. I feel everybody needs to stand up. Hey, listen. There was enough money to give every family every family in this country twenty thousand dollars to go home for two months they chose to give it to special interests and campaign donors the kennedy space center and they abandoned us so you could have given me money i'd gladly walk away for 60 days and let this virus settle down i'm not going to do it alone okay are you going to continue to violate the state's orders and stay open state order this isn't an order this is a conspiracy this is a tyranny what do you want to tell other restaurant owners who... Wake up. Stand up. This is America. Be free. I got patriots coming out supporting me the last two days. You know what? It's a great thing. Wake up. This is America. Don't let them ro- uh, ramrod you. This is crazy. When you turn around and you watch what's going on on West Ginge Avenue, the big department stores, the train station, the airports, side by side eating meals for four hours. And you're going to blame me? Come on. Come on. This is not right, and you guys know it. Everybody knows it. Stand up, America. Give us the money to shut this thing down and calm this virus, but don't take it out on a select few. Is there anything else you want to add, sir? That's it, brother. All right. I'm glad you listened to me. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, well, I'm really the a humorous West guy. Michigan just listened to you. You're okay. live on TV right now. All right. I'm, go- I'm glad to hear that, okay? Right. Yes, I'm really sir. a good guy. Yes, I've been married 38 years. i got a wife, three kids. i got four great grandchildren. Let me tell you something. i got a good life, and I've worked hard for it. I'm not giving up easily. I'm not going down alone. They want me to go down and be quiet. They never want to hear from me again. I'm not going to put up with it. Got it's you. time to rise up. Got you. Got to rise up. Shut it all down or don't shut any of us down. That's the only way to get control of a virus. And believe me, our governor can say all day long that there is no such thing as surface contact. This is a virus. Come on. Go over there and sneeze on a package that you're going to buy for Christmas. Have somebody else come behind you by 30 seconds that didn't know you sneezed. Good for him. This is what it's going to take. We need a, to we need to fight, and we need to start a fight. Republicans have been kind of pussies in the last 20, 30 years, as the left has sit there and emboldened themselves. We need to be brave. We need to push back, because if we don't, our lives can get a lot worse. The left is taking away our First Amendment rights. They want to take away our Second Amendment rights. If we let them, what is to stop them from taking everything else? Sounds kind of familiar, right? Isn't that what happened in Cuba? Take away their guns, then take away their First Amendment. The Soviet Union, China, North Korea, Venezuela. Listen, the socialists of the left aren't talking about socialist countries like Norway, Sweden, and Switzerland. And when I say socialist countries, I put air asterisks on those because they're not socialist countries. Those countries do not have socialist economies. Our socialists 
like Ilhan Omar, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, and Rashida Tlaib are talking about the bad kind of social bad kinds of socialism presented by the above countries like the Soviet Union, North Korea, and Venezuela. So are Gavin Newsom, Eric Garcetti, Gretchen Whitmer, Andrew Cuomo, Bill de Blasio, Laura, Lori Lightfoot, Kamala Harris, and Sleepy Creepy Joe. Remember this. It's all about power. All this suppression, all of this shutting down the economy is about power. And oppression guarantees power. So we really need to fight. You remember about 11 months ago when we said China's incompetence and disregard for its citizens and human life in general, that led to the world that led the world through this pandemic that burned through the populations. Remember that when calling the China, when calling the COVID-19, the China virus or Wuhan who flew was actually being racist Remember when Trump closed our borders to China? Trump was being a xenophobe? Guess what? CNN has received classified Chinese documents that discuss how terrible the Chinese did when the virus was accidentally released. <coughs> These documents, I think, kind of confirm that the virus was released from a lab by accident and spread uh, to Wuhan. The original leak story is that a woman working at the lab accidentally caught the China virus, then went to Wuhan where she spread the disease. A few plane trips later, the virus spreads throughout the world. We know that China has been lying from day one. Um, they said they only had 5,000 deaths. To this day, they only have 5,000 deaths. We know this is crap because... The, they have closed their economy three times and yet not seen another death since the beginning of the pandemic. There have been pictures of pallets of funeral urns, up to 35,000 of them sent out of the country. So it's very probable a couple more people than 5,000 people died. Several doctors who tried to alert the world uh, and China of the danger of the virus have disappeared. And I put that in air quotes because basically, I don't know, AK-47 bullets probably don't make you disappear. They just kill you. They said the virus, which was, this was confirmed by the WHO, the World Health Organization, was not transmissible person by person. Now, with the documents CNN got, we know this for a fact. And none of this is going to be a surprise. That's why I'm not going to sit back and talk too much about it. Chinese officials gave the world a more optimistic data than they had access, inter access to internally. China's bureaucracy was a real problem, and they hid the problem because people on the lower rungs of the ladder of the bureaucracy would probably have been held responsible as they probably should have been. China's system took an average of 23 days to confirm patients had the Wuhan flu. And testing failures meant most received negative results until January 10th when a new test came out. This led to more spread, bad contact tracing, and more deaths. The United States, as much as we like to blame Trump... The United States was never that bad. Next thing, a history of underfunding, understaffing, poor morale, and bureaucratic models of governance hampered China's early warning system. Internal audits had found. We've seen this before, where bureaucracy led by incompetence can cause a terrible disaster. The one specific, Chernobyl under the Soviet Union. I remember watching a, a, a documentary, it was a short series, and one of the guys who was responsible for making the decision to evacuate Chernobyl was previously a shoemaker before he met somebody and became a director of the city or a mayor of the city. Same thing with China. They hire incompetence. 
A large and previously undis- uh, next one. A large and previously undisclosed outbreak of influenza happened in early December in Hubei province. Hubei is the state where Wuhan is a city. This caused the Chinese to disregard the Wuhan flu as just the normal seasonal flu. Finally, it is possible this disease has been in the United States since December and possibly November. The disease started in China in September or October. Of course, this is CNN. They had to throw Trump under the bus somehow, even though they had proof in their hands through classified documents that China lied and were led by a bureaucracy of incompetence. (coughs) Here's what they included in this article, which was a quote from health experts when they found out China screwed up. This is from Yanzug Huang, a senior fellow for the Global Health of the Council of Foreign Relations, who has written extensively on the public health in China. Now, mind you, with that name, he's probably Chinese, but we'll, we'll give him a break here. Quote, it is clear they did make mistakes, and not just mistakes on what happened when you're dealing with a novel virus. And novel virus means it's a new virus. Also bureaucratic and politically motivated errors in how they handled it. These had global consequences. You can never guarantee 100% transparency. It's not just about the intentional cover-up. You are about to. You are also constrained by the technology and other issues with a novel virus. Okay, that's fine. But even if they had been 100% transparent, that would not stop the Trump administration from downplaying the seriousness of it. It would probably not have stopped developing into a pandemic. I, I'm sorry, what did Trump have to do with the incompetence, the the cruelty, the non-transparency of China with it getting out of China? Why was Trump even brought into this? This quote in this, it was about a 5,000, 6,000 word essay. This quote stood completely outside the realm of why. It, it had nothing to do with the story. Because CNN, they need to cover the China, uh, the screw up in China by their government, the health industry, and the propaganda department. Just typical. I also want to point out that not even CNN is broadcasting this. This is a buried story on their website. I had to search for this article. But what do you expect from a pig but a grunt? But here's the one thing. We, doubt, we do now know where this whole thing came from. And I don't want to hear anything else from anyone when we call it a China virus or the Wuhan flu, because that's exactly what it is. So our supposed leader uh, going on with this stupid co- uh, China virus thing, Sleepy Creepy Joe did a short interview and was asked about the vaccine. He then threw out an idea that would absolutely stopped the virus in his first hundred days as president. Listen to this. Do you plan to get vaccinated before Inauguration Day? And will you do it in public the way that Presidents Obama, Bush and Clinton have suggested they're willing? I'd be happy to do that. When Dr. Fauci says we have a vaccine that is safe, that's the moment in which I will stand before the public and see that, look, part of what has to happen, Jake, and you know as well as I do, people have lost faith in the ability of the vaccine to work. Already the numbers are really staggeringly low. And it matters what a president and a vice president do. Mm-hmm. And so I think that my three predecessors have set the, the model as to what should be done, saying once it's declared to be safe, and then I think what Barack said, once Fauci says it's clear, that's, that's my measure, then obviously we take it. And it's important to communicate to the American people, it's safe. It's safe to do this. My inclination, uh, Jake, is in the first day I'm inaugurated to say I'm going to ask the public for 100 days to mask. Just 100 days to mask. Not forever, 100 days. And I think we'll see a significant reduction if we occur that, if that occurs with vaccinations and masking to drive down the numbers considerably. 
couple of things here. First, Tony Fauci is a doctor in name only. He hasn't practiced since the 70s. Um, he's not an epidemiologist. He has flip-flopped about everything from school openings to mask wearings. He would not know a good v uh, vaccine if it was stuck in his ass. So why Biden would actually trust Fauci, I, I don't know. This is still an anti-Trump thing. The fact that we have three vaccines that were developed by private companies under the Trump administration shows the fact that they don't want to talk about this. They want to ignore it. They want to make it a bad thing. Like Trump had gone down into the basement of the White House and actually kind of cooked up his own vaccine. This is a big win for Trump. And Biden cannot admit it. Because these are questions that are going to come up when Biden jacks up everything else. Finally, someone show me one study, and I can only think of one study that was inconclusive, that show masks work. There was only one study in Sweden that said masks preventing the spread of COVID-19 is kind of up in the air. It's really not, yeah. The problem is there's a mask mandate throughout Europe, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, England, or uh, Great Britain. And they still have a huge spike in COVID-19 uh, infections. So, you know, is it possible that maybe the masks don't work? Maybe masking isn't the only way? Do I wear one? All the time. It is the only logic. It's only logical to wear one. It makes sense that if something's over my mouth and I spit, it's not going to get through. But saying that a mask will suppress the virus is naive and just dumb. So we can see the government isn't doing anything to help businesses. And looking at Joe Biden, he's not going to do much. Um, and it's been a year since we've been shut down. Nancy Pelosi still hasn't come up with a bill for a stimulus package and refuses to negotiate with anyone until recently. We'll get to that. Of course, the Democrats are blaming Mitch McConnell, probably because they don't know how our government works, with people like Rashida Tlaib, AOC, Ilhan Omar. That's not that much of a shock. The lower house is supposed to come up with a bill and the upper house is supposed to approve it or manipulate the bill to their liking. The lower house being the House of Representatives, the upper house being the Senate. Then the two houses negotiate. I honestly cannot remember the last time this happened. It just seems like everyone is going willy-nilly on crap. The problem is Nancy's bills would have cost $2.4 trillion. And that $2.4 trillion will go to museums, colleges, and Democratic-run cities who have uh, been fiscally irresponsible on our debt because they lost their tax base by either shutting businesses down or because people are leaving their states. Ask California. Ask New York. Mitch McConnell of the Senate wants a $900 billion stimulus bill where the money goes to small businesses and people who are suffering only. Trump has pushed this bill to go to $1.4 trillion just to get Nancy to sign something. But no one on the Democratic Party in the House of Representatives wants to negotiate. But here's the thing. And of course, they blame Republicans because Republicans are stopping it. No, you've got a Democratic House figure out a bill, send it, and then it goes back and forth. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how laws work. But Nancy has been working. She's got a couple really important bills out. So there are two bills coming to the House floor this week. The main bill on the House floor this week is a measure to end federal ban on marijuana and require courts to expunge prior marijuana conditions, convictions. Sounds pretty important to me. What about you? There's another one. This is a bigger one. Actually, I really think this is something. Lawmakers will also take up the Big Cat Public Safety Act, which would ban the ownership of big cats like lions and tigers. 
Um, this one was spurred by the Netflix documentary Tiger King. So what? I can't, I they, Democrats don't want me to own a gun. They don't want me to say what I want to say. They don't want me to go to a church. They don't want me to protest for things I believe in. Now they don't want me to own a lion? Jesus Christ. Are these people really serious? These are Nancy's priorities? Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader, blew a gasket this week. He said, quote, The Speaker of the House has denied the ability to get help to the American public simply because they wanted to determine something would happen in the election. To harm President Trump and him getting reelected. But what has happened in America is people are hurting. This has got to stop. Democrats have focused on cats and cannabis, but not on COVID. They think after a humiliating defeat in the ballot box this year, that's through the House and through state legislatures and the governor races, that Democrats would get the picture that Americans are demanding some action on these issues. For months, Speaker Pelosi has done nothing but help keep Americans who are hurting. For more than 40 times, Republicans have brought on the floor COVID relief votes that Democrats have voted against. Well, I mean, is he right? I'm thinking he probably is. Do you know why? I think one of the things Kevin McCarthy hit on is we just want, Pelosi just doesn't want Trump to be president. I totally believe that. I think that's absolutely true. That's all she wants is for Trump. And if she released a stimulus package, it would make Trump look good. Well, today, Friday, Pelosi has accepted a smaller stimulus package of $900 billion. A reporter, probably kind of shocked, asked her why. And she said, perhaps you missed what I said earlier. Joe Biden committed to ending and crushing the virus and had a had a Build Better America initiative. Build Back Better. A vaccine answers our prayers. The vaccine came from Trump, not Biden. An answer to our prayers of 95% effectiveness in terms of Pfizer and Moderna, Moderna, and now there's a third company that's done one, and there may be others coming forward. That is a total game changer and a new president, a new president and a new vaccine. Of course, the old president created the new vaccine. She won't give him any breaks. This has simplicity. It, it's what we've been had our had in our bills. It's for a shorter period of time, but that's okay now because we have a new president. The president who recognizes that we need to depend on science and stop the virus. President Trump was the one who hired Moderna and Pfizer to come up with the virus. He lowered the regulations so that the the vaccine could be approved quicker. What is she talking about? You got Joe, sleepy, creepy Joe, screaming that we just need more masks and more shutdowns because he hasn't left his basement in whatever. Okay, here we'll continue on with what she said. A president would understand that stands that America's working families need to have money in their pockets in, uh, in a way that takes them into the future without any of the contraptions of any of the other bills that the administration was asso- associating herself with because it was inaudible before. So Trump was president um, and that's why she would not approve any bill that meant to help citizens and small businesses. Here's a news slash, folks. Get this through your frickin' heads right now and start fighting. Democrats do not care about you. They do not care about us. They do not. They are worried about animals and keeping us stoned. If we are stoned, we won't complain. The problem is we are out of money and can't afford pot right now. I'm sure there will be something to give pot for free. You cannot trust these people. They do not care. And all these people are living in million dollar homes. Fuck them. Okay. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Run and Fool, R U N N I N F E W L. 
You can follow me on Parlor at Dumbasses Talking Politics. That's one word. You can download or listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, and YouTube. Visit my website at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics, where I will actually have all of the videos, graphics, and links to my resources listed online. This is Gene. I hope you have a great weekend, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Thank you.